Yeah. Is that kind of share that assessment? How would you assess your career there? Uh, I feel like I just have a, a lot of bumps in the road where like fighting injuries and staying healthy and that's what I think made me have my okay career so far, but I feel myself of getting healthier and performing at a better level. And you're playing against your home state school, obviously. Does that add something to it this week? Yeah, it does. Um, I feel, I feel so, I, haven't, I haven't been home in a while, and I know a lot of players on the team, so it feels nice playing against them. It'll be a nice play against them. And obviously, there are a lot of injuries on, on defensive front for you guys. You could have an expanded role. Um, where do you think your role is going to be this week and the next few weeks? I feel like I've been the last couple of games. I've been having a big time role playing a lot of playing a lot of minutes and stuff. So I just I feel like my role this week would be pretty big. How do you feel like your transition to defensive end has gone this year? Uh, it's a, it was a little tough at first, but now I'm getting the I'm getting adjusted to it. You know, it's hard to play one position and go to the next and try to switch up your moves and learn different techniques and stuff. What were the biggest things you had to learn in order to succeed at that position? Rushing on the edge. It's way different. It's, you have a lot more space on the edge than you have inside. Inside is quicker, so you, you, have to, you don't have to think as much, but when you're on the edge, you have to, you have to think a lot more on what you're going to get. I know you've been doing some inside rushing in the nickel packages as well. Have you kind of enjoyed still having some opportunities to do that? Yeah, I, do. I, I, have a, I love the opportunity to go back inside sometimes. It's nice. So you started here as a defensive end, right? Then moved inside, now back, back outside. What is that process going like for you? Um, I think it's going to help me in the long run, you know? And it just shows that I'm versatile. So it's just whatever the, whatever the team needs, I'm here, to, I'm here to do it. I'm a team player. Jayshon, what's the mood in your position room there with just all these injuries mounting? I know we hear that next man up so much, but without Nick, Maybe without Coop, Draymond's been hurt, maybe he's been hurt. It seems like it's got to be tough at times to keep that spirit high when everyone seems to be going down with an injury just in your unit. Uh, I don't think so, actually. We're still, we come in the room, everybody's happy, everybody's smiling. So once, one, once like you said, the next guy up, when one, one guy's up, the next guy has to be prepared. And that's what that's one thing we stress in the line room is um, next man up. And that's what we work for every, each and every day. Jay Sean, how do you prepare to go against a guy who's six foot nine and four hundred pounds? <laughs> it's like go against every other guy. You haven't played anybody who's that big. Uh, Over the giant. <laughs> Orlando Pace. You're going against Orlando Pace? Yeah. When? Three technique, double team. So it's about the same thing. <laughs> do you know a lot of the guys on Minnesota's roster? Yeah, I do. I have some friends on their roster. You, you've been talking to any of them this week, talking to any trash? Uh, I talked to um, Tyler Johnson, Seth Green. Like Carter Coffin and um, come on, Martin. How close did you come to going? Uh, not that close. <laughs> was that what, the was it, era? what was it that brought you here instead of staying so close to home and traveling so far away? Uh, Coach Johnson. Well, Coach Johnson at Penn State, he called me when he got to Ohio State, and I just I built a relationship with him better than I built a relationship with a, the home team coach, and that's what. I, is what came here. It was more about building a relationship with the coach rather than wanting to stay close to home, family, yeah. friends, all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Because I, I feel like I had to get a, get away from home to grow as a grow as a player, as a man, too. Do you look up at all to a guy like James Ornitis who came from Minnesota and played here? Yeah. James Ornitis is one of the best players to play in Ohio State at the LB position. So, yeah. yeah. Coach Meyer said, I know you've already graduated, and he said you've kind of got your career lined up. What are you, gonna, what are you planning to do after you leave here? Uh, I'm planning on being a uh, family finance, do family financial services. So pretty much do like work with athletes, do fun. Yeah. So have you already kind of like financial advising for these guys? Financial, finance, like financial advising, pretty much. Okay. Have you already started that process a little bit with some of these guys? Uh, this summer I worked with um, Merrill Lynch, okay. and so I did, I, worked, I did a lot of that stuff this summer. Not a good day for the Yeah. What are your impressions of what Minnesota does on offense? Uh, they're a downhill running team. So once you stop the run, it opens up it opens up a passing for passing game for us. Being a bigger defensive end, do you kinda enjoy going against a team that likes to downhill run it? Yeah, because it, it just like more run blocking, so it's easier for me, I feel like. You mentioned next man up with, with the injuries, but when one of those guys is Nick Bosa, does can one guy replace Nick Bosa or is that a collective effort between all of you guys at the position? It's Nick Bosa. No one can replace Nick. So what do you do I mean like what have you guys done to, to 
replicate at least some of that production? Uh, the rotation, pretty much. If we, we learn in the D-line room, once one man goes down, that means two men have to step up and pick up the production for that one man. It doesn't matter who it is in the D-line room because every man's production, as we, as we work at the D-line, one man's production can equal two man's production. So once that one man goes down, those two people have to step up and produce for him. This is like a couple, time, man. a couple times this week, Urban has mentioned that he wants more out of the pass rush. Is he just saying that with us publicly, or are you guys getting that same message behind closed doors? We we always want more pass rush. We always want we always want to get to the quarterback. So it's just not it's just not him. It's, it's us too. And we always want to get to the quarterback, but it's hard to get to the quarterback when teams are running the ball and doing play action yeah. sometimes. Deshaun, they, they've got a guy that's 6'9", 400 pounds, who may start a tackle this week. Uh, what would be your first reaction if you go up to the line of scrimmage and that guy's in front of you? What would, what would be your first thought? Get your hands on him before he gets, before he gets your hands on him. Yeah. Pretty much. What's the challenge up? That's what I'm saying. What's the challenge up going against a guy that large in your mind? Is it more the weight or the height? The weight. Yeah, and why is that? 400 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with 400 pounds? Well, but does it tell you? Make it move. I mean, you know what I mean. You know, you know for, what I'm saying. I, for, I feel like if you're 400 pounds, you're six nine. You're not gonna be able to move. So yeah. If you get on your, if you use your speed and get your hands on him first and rip off him, it's hard for him to keep his balance. But, but we've seen that from he's top heavy. So just as long as you get your hands on him before you get your hand, before you get your hand on him, you're gonna be pretty good. You mentioned the injury. Last question. What have been the injuries you've had to deal with? Um, just like freshman year, I had the hernia and. Then, a couple of ankle injuries, just that's it. Thanks, Jason. Thank you.